Time travel, a case study. Um, the working title of this presentation was actually My Perfect Failure at Time Travel. Um, but I'm not convinced it was a uh, failure. <clears throat> so you're probably asking yourself, what was his time machine? Um, it was not a DeLorean. I'm not Marty McFly. Um, it was not a transporter. I'm not James T. Kirk. Um, and it was not uh, a TARDIS. Um, I'm not Doctor Who. That is uh, time and re um, rela relative dimension in space. That's what the TARDIS stands for. Uh, so before I reveal uh, my time machine, uh, you've got to have a plan. So I would ask myself, when do I want to go? Where do I want to go? What am I going to do when I get there? What supplies do I need? And am I prepared for the unexpected? Like the slide changing that fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the decision was 1860s and Yosemite. <clears throat> and the time machine is John Muir's writings. What am I going to do when I get there? Uh, five days, four nights, uh, from Tuolumne Meadows to Yosemite Valley via Cathedral Lakes, Sunrise Lakes, Clouds Rest, and Half Dome, and Little Yosemite Valley. Who best to know about 1860s than reenactors of the Civil War? So my friend and I went to our first uh, Civil War reenactment and got a firsthand lesson in how serious they take it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so serious that we got explicit instructions on how to pack our packs. <clears throat> so, um, so serious that the woman on the right is not dead. She is alive. <clears throat> Her name is Kara Bertels, and she was a seamstress, seamstress who um, made all of the clothes that we wore. Uh, we had to determine what we were going to eat. Um, thanks to John Muir's writings, it was pretty clear. Uh, dried peaches, uh, bread, we found a, a reproduced hardtack, uh, almonds, walnuts, uh, tea, uh, and venison jerky. <clears throat> unfortunately, in all the planning that we did, uh, <laughs> we ha unfortunately had to take five modern items. Well, I should say three of those. Uh, first aid kit was actually optional, but we were not stupid. Bear canister was uh, required by law. Uh, filter, water filter, we had to. Camera was optional, and then lastly, the stove. We could not have fires where we were going. So, off we go. After um, zero hours of sleep in Tuolumne Meadows at the trailhead, because um, <laughs> the campsites were rock hard, um, we get on the trail. <clears throat> The more I see of deer, the more I admire them as mountaineers. They make their way into the heart of the roughest solitudes with smooth reserve of strength, through dense belts of brush and forest encumbered with fallen trees and boulder piles, across canyons, roaring streams, and snowfields, ever showing forth beauty and courage. No feature of all the noble landscape as seen from here seems more wonderful than the cathedral itself a temple displaying nature's best masonry and sermons in stone. How often I have gazed at it from the tops of hills and ridges and through openings in the forest of many short excursions, devoutly wondering, admiring, longing. <clears throat> this is where the veil, is, veil was thinnest during the trip as far as time travel. Um, my friend who was with me, he said, um, I can't wait to get home and sell all this stuff on eBay. <laughs> I was like, really? Wow, OK. I'm going to take some time off from you for a little bit. <laughs> Everything awakening alert and joyful, the birds begin to stir. Deer quietly withdraw into leafy hiding places. The dew vanishes, flowers spread their petals, every pulse beats high, every life cell rejoices. The very rocks seem to thrill with life. <clears throat> 
Once again, um, I get off track with the time travel. Uh, briefly visited 1956 down there in the lower left-hand corner. Um, came into modern day at the base of Half Dome with an iPad and a radio tower. <laughs> This day, just like yesterday, a few clouds, motionless, and apparently worth no work to do beyond looking beautiful. Frost enough for crystal building, glorious fields of ice diamonds, destined to last but a night. In 1872, the first, the first men to climb Half Dome did it barefoot. Um, so um, I did it barefoot. Uh, but there are cables. They didn't do it with cables back then. They did it with rope. Um, <laughs> it was surprisingly easy, you guys. Our feet are really, really incredible things. Thousands of tired, nerve-shaken, over-civilized people are beginning to find out that going to the mountains is going home, that wildness is a necessity, and that mountain parks and reservations are useful not only as fountains of timber and irrigating rivers, but as fountains of life. And when I reflected on the trip, um, I realized that the, the quickest and easiest way to time travel is through words. And so I encourage you to pick up a book, whether it be old or new, and travel to the past, to the future. Thanks. <laughs>